Hi, I'm Brent. Today we've got a fantastic opportunity to compare the current model WRX, and in this case it's our R&D vehicle, which is an MY15, to a current model BRZ, which was one of the first delivered here in Australia as well, and that was even a couple of years older again. And a lot of people ask us, what is the difference between the FA series engines normally aspirated in a BRZ or a Toyota 86, or in a turbocharged WRX? And as you can see on the BRZ, this is our R&D vehicle. It's got our turbo kit fitted with a modified inlet, inlet pipe, the turbo being down under slung underneath. And of course, um, there are different designs of different turbo applications, whereas the factory standard turbo location on a Subaru is also down underneath. But you can see with this particular model, factory standard, it comes with a top man intercooler, which has been replaced with the uh, verticooler option. Um, again, one of our R&D updates. So let's just touch on the differences between the engines themselves. You've got to remember WRX is a lower compression turbocharged engine. The BRZ is a, a, a higher compression ratio normally aspirated. So when you put boost or forced induction, whether it's a supercharger kit or a turbocharger kit, into a BRZ engine, you've got to be very careful. Around seven PSI is normally the sweet spot. Anything above that, you start taking serious risks with engine reliability, as in um, Conrod and piston failure. But of course, on the WRX, factory standard, these engines run up to uh, 20, 21, tw sometimes 22 PSI, depending on where in the rev range you want to measure it. So of course, there is a lot of scope for improvements, but what you've got to also remember the WRX comes with a twin scroll turbo, which is underslung. Most aftermarket turbo kits on WRXs are not twin scroll, so they have different types of uh, throttle response when it comes to boost. So let's just have a look at some of the actual differences between the engines when we're comparing them. And some of the things even just hit, sitting here we've noticed straight away, um, you can notice the inlet manifold on a WRX sits a lot higher than the BRZ. A lot of people ask about how can I fit a WRX turbo engine into a BRZ. Well, the challenge is it is quite difficult because the manifold is high. So let's just have a look at that. And you can see if you use the alternator as a yardstick, the inlet manifold is effectively below the top of the alternator. Whereas if you look at the front of the WRX, the alternator is actually below the top of the inlet manifold. So there's one example. The other example is you'll see the WRX has got a throttle body buried underneath where the intake comes from the intercooler and on a BRZ, the intake for the throttle body is at the front because normally the air intake comes off the factory standard air box here and of course being uh, aftermarket turbo kit, this is a little bit different. So let's also look at some other things you might be considering. The uh, air conditioning system, if you just look at the location of the pipes of the, um, the air conditioning pump on the BRZ, and then look at the location of the pump on the WRX, completely different again. So if you're going to fit one of these engines, you need to consider that. Of course, the oil filter and the oil cooler on a WRX is factory standard in this location. The car comes factory standard with an oil cooler. BRZ, we've had to fit an aftermarket oil cooler. Now in this case, more often these days, we actually do use the WRX oil cooler instead of the aftermarket HKS remote oil cooler, which is mounted down in the front of the bumper bar. But the oil assembly and oil filter sits in a very similar location and that is obviously one of the things that you would consider as being very very similar. So let's also look at some of the other things such as the alternator location and the belts and you'll notice the belts and the tensioner for the BRZ comes around the front of the engine there and of course if you're fitting it with supercharger these are some of the things you would modify and let's look at the tensioner on the WRX completely different design and a completely different way that the tensioner works on the main belt on the front of the engine and of course right down the bottom there um, just you will be interested to know is actually the water pump which runs off the belt and that is hung off the bottom of the engine and of course on a BRZ it is buried right down the bottom there as well but of course it's got some other modifications because it's different again so the long and the short of it is if you really want a forced induction engine to do it the easy way it's a lot easier on a WRX to um, modify the existing turbo kit. You can get some really good healthy improvements. The car um, is very conservative, it's boost control, but remember it's becoming more and more widely known that the biggest weakness in the turbocharged FA series engine in the WRX is Conrods. They bend 
and when they do bend, eventually they fatigue and snap and they punch a huge hole up through the top of the block and just grenade the whole block. In the old days, the uh, EJ series engines was piston reliability and it was a lot easier to diagnose that and it didn't grenade the engine in a dramatic way and you could quite easily fix it. So these are some of the things you want to think about if you're modifying your WRX. But if you're looking about modifying a BRZ or a Toyota 86 and you want to go forced induction, whether it's a turbo or a supercharger kit. Some of the turbo kits sit up high here because it's a lot easier for them to drain the oil back into the sump. This particular turbo kit that we use has a scavenge pump, which I can't show you on this video, that sits down underneath and uses similar parts off the back of the um, cam drive to suck the oil out of the turbo um, collector assembly where the oil drains at the bottom and it pumps it back in the engine. Very similar in design to the WRX. But of course, if you go for a supercharger kit, then it's a lot more obvious and it sits on the top. So for the time being, I think that is the best way to ex explain the differences. And of course, a performance upgrade on a BRZ Toyota 86 is a great way to make the car a lot more fun to drive. So there you have it. Some other features and benefits on how you can improve your car. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. But for now, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.